You may have previously thought that basketball's color bearer was broken by the three trailblazers. Chuck Cooper, first black player to be drafted in the NBA. Nat Clifton, first black player to be signed into the league. And Earl Lloyd, first black player to play in the NBA. All of which occurred in 1950. But this isn't the true case. The first, first person, the first, the first, the first, the first player of color in the NBA. The trailblazer. The first um, person of color to play professional basketball. Pioneer who paved the way. The first non-Caucasian player in the yeah, NBA. The first person of color. The first in basketball, just like Jackie was a first in baseball. Just like this, yo. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will. Need his name up in lights, he just wants to be heard. Whether it's the beat of the mic, he feels so unlike every In 1947, the NBA's color barrier was quietly broken by a man named Wat Misaka, first non Caucasian player in professional basketball. Misaka was the number one draft pick for the New York Knicks, frontiering racial diversity in the NBA. He blazed the trail for others to follow, beginning acceptance of minority races in the NBA as well as our society. So, how did he achieve all this? Let's back it up a bit and start from the beginning. COVID-19. December 21st, 1923. Wataro Misaka was born Fusaiichi and Tatsuo Misaka in Ogden, Utah. He grew up on the famous 25th Street where his parents owned a barbershop. At a young age, Misaka was very athletic, playing multiple sports and ended up falling in love with basketball. One of his first times on an organized team was at Ogden High School, where the school won the regional and state basketball championships. After graduating in 1941, Misaka continued his education and basketball career at Weber Junior College, now known as Weber State. It was here that Watt, once again, had ushered his team to victory as the Wildcats won the ICAC championships twice, back to back. Misaka was the 1942 MVP of the postseason tournament and the 1943 Weber Athlete of the Year. He also was the highest scoring forward in the league. Then, in 1944, Watt transferred to the University of Utah. Here they are, Coach Battle Peterson's Utah Basketball Brigade, a team that's turned out to be one of the most colorful in the land. They have a number of nicknames. The Redskins, which is official, the Blitz Kids, the Cinderella Cagers, and from the Bobby Sox Brigade, Ute Utes. During this time, college ball was very exciting and popular, especially this particular year for the running Utes, because this year was the first and only year the U won a national title, the NCAA championship. It was the Utes versus Dartmouth at Madison Square Garden during the 1944 national game. The teams were evenly met, neck and neck on the scoreboard through the whole game until the Utes' hard-earned victory finally came about. The score was 42-40 in overtime. You know, he wasn't just playing for himself. He wasn't just playing for the University of Utah. You know, he was, he was playing for an entire community, an entire community that was behind Bob Wire for four years of their life. Misaka played basketball during one of the hardest times for Japanese Americans. In 1942, over 120,000 Japanese Americans were unjustly incarcerated in the Japanese internment camps as a result of World War II with Japan. During the war, Wat Misaka left the University of Utah to serve two years in the U.S. military, specifically Army military intelligence. Then, he later returned to the U around 1946, perfect timing as he led the U to take home the NIT Basketball Championship in 1947 at Madison Square Garden. Misaka had played a vital role in bringing home the NCAA and NIT championships. His fantastic defensive skills and speed earned him the nickname Kilowatt for the large sum of energy he put out onto the court during his time at the U. My name is Wat Misaka. Uh, Wat is short for Wataru, which is my given name. It's a Japanese name. I was drafted in the NBA in 1947. When I found out that I had this chance to go play for the Knicks, I had about two or three weeks to think about it. I finally decided that, well, I might as well go try it, because if I don't, then I'll never know, and I'll always wonder. For a Japanese kid uh, to be playing in front of all these others, have them uh, actually cheer for you was inspiring, uh, to 
to say the least. Nick Five to open at Garden tonight. Other newcomers on the squad are Paul Noel, Kentucky, Tommy Tomlinson, Southern Methodist, Lee Robbins, Colorado, Ray Kuka, Notre Dame, and Watt Misaka, Utah. I, that didn't enter my mind at all that that, uh, that I was going to be a first of anything, you know. The probably greatest unknown American sports stories in, in our country's history. It's something they should, the New York Knicks should celebrate as part of their history. I mean, how incredible is it that they drafted a Japanese American in 1947 as their first round draft choice? He played in three games and scored seven points. Pretty great for a rookie coming off the bench. But even after those three games, Misako was cut from the Knicks. Some suspected it was because of his Japanese ancestry. Though the war had ended, the anti-Japanese sentiment was sadly still raging. And although Misaka's career may have been short-lived, the impact it made would forever change professional basketball as he frontiered racial diversity in the NBA. By being the first person of color, his legacy paved the way for other non-Caucasians to play in pro basketball and brought acceptance toward minority races. In fact, Misaka's barrier breaking occurred the same year Jackie Robinson became the first person of color in baseball. This was significant because people of color just weren't found in this kind of setting. They weren't out there playing professional sports like they are today. Watt Misaka frontiered racial diversity in the NBA. It was only three years after Misaka's quiet barrier breaking that Earl Lloyd became the first black player to play in the NBA. Chuck Cooper was the first black player drafted. And Nat Clifton was the first black player to be signed. And it didn't stop there. Misaka had officially broken the color barrier and the world was beginning to see the results. All you guys need to do is watch and see. What he did, you know, paved the way for me. Yeah. Paved the way, man. Stretch the imagination of basketball players. Ever. Before Wat Misaka's entrance into pro basketball, the NBA was an all-white league with no people of color. His barrier breaking led us to where we are today. Now remember, before 1947, there were zero people of color, no diversity whatsoever. Today, the NBA is now made up of 82.4% people of color and is the leading sports institute in racial diversity. Not only that, Misaka broke barriers during one of the most tumultuous times, at the height of Japanese American discrimination. I'm not sure in 44 we were ever aware of the pressures that, uh, that he had to overcome challenges that a lot of people will never face in their lives. What he saw in Salt Lake was how people were treating Japanese people. The no talk, the walk across the street, the insults and things like that. You take it for granted, it was like things like when you go to the store and you know you're the last one to be waited on. When you go to the theater or something, uh, people will sit away from you and that sort of thing went on with me you know, all my life. I remember people saying things out of the stands. Yelling uh, to get the Jap off the court. Bok Masaka, a Jap. Bok Masaka, Hawaiian born Jap. Though Misaka was a Japanese American U.S. citizen, born and raised in Ogden, Utah, his college coaches often claimed he was Vietnamese or Hawaiian born in order to protect Misaka from racially charged backlash due to the war. We have come a long way since 1947, but racial acceptance and belonging still have a very long way to go. Watt Misaka, who played for the New York Knicks back in 1947, the first non-white player in the NBA, uh, and who served in the U.S. Army during World War II. Thank you so much. Watt Misaka left a legacy in the game of basketball. Misaka was drafted by the New York Knicks in 1947 and broke barriers by becoming the first non-Caucasian player to be drafted into the Basketball Association of America, a precursor to the NBA. To be uh, recognized and known for the, the basketball I played, well, I guess that's my legacy. And the first number